All right, everyone, welcome to the next lecture, 3-2 on limb development. Uh, so before we get into the um, actual anatomy of the limbs, I think it's important to understand how the anatomy is formed to begin with. Uh, so uh, we've already talked about development up through week four. By the end of week four, uh, about day 28, the majority of the central nervous system has already been formed. Uh, so all of the main structures, uh, the primordial um, developmental patterns have been set in place and at this point it's just a matter of expanding upon that central nervous system. Now the peripheral part of the body in week five begins to uh, form these outgrowths uh, located along uh, different somites along the developing uh, embryo's body. So these, uh, these somites uh, at specific locations based on the programmed patterning from the Hox genes is going to induce the formation of what are called limb buds. So these limb buds grow out from the body wall uh, uh, and are formed mainly from mesoderm. The uh, attractive signal for the outgrowth of all of the cells within the limb buds is this apical ectodermal ridge. So this ridge of ectoderm uh, signals for the mesenchyme within the limb bud to begin condensing to form um, the uh, bone models in that chondrogenesis process we've already talked about. <clears throat> oh, so uh, once the limb bud has formed, of course, we have to form the individual bones and muscles within the limb bud itself. And so uh, quickly here, I'll talk about the process of digitation. In digitation, the um, chondrocytes have condensed and formed the bone models of the digits. And once that occurs, a process of programmed physiological cell death called apoptosis, it's Greek, it's pronounced apoptosis, falling apart is what it means, uh, results in the death of the cells between the bone models of the digits. By day 56, that digitation process is complete, and that's why some of us have um, the little uh, webbings in our fingers, uh, some more than others, is because that uh, programmed uh, apoptotic process uh, was, was uh, taking place. So the lower limb, of course, and the upper limb form in analogous ways uh, and use some of the similar Hox genes and programming to do it. So the lower limb uh, development occurs slightly delayed to the upper limb development. Um, but aside from that, pretty much analogous processes. So as that mesenchyme condenses and begins to form the bone models, as the individual bone models uh, expand and grow, they start to get close to, almost bump into the adjacent bones, the adjo adjacent bone models. When that happens, signaling molecules from the chondrocytes, the ossifying chondrocytes, are detected by the neighboring con uh, chondrocytes from different bone models. Uh, and that signaling mechanism causes chondrogenesis to halt and causes the formation of the joints between the bones, the synovial joints and the specialized cells within those joints that form the synovial fluid. So this is called the joint interzone region. When the limb uh, buds have fully developed, the limbs are, are developing, there is a rotation process that occurs uh, in the development Embryologic, embryologically. <clears throat> so about the seventh week, the upper limbs uh, form uh, like uh, quadrupeds and then rotate laterally to form the anatomical position that we have. The lower limbs rotate uh, medially. And so in this way, uh, the uh, physiological extensors that develop on our backsides actually rotate on our legs to become uh, flexors, to flex the hip. Uh, so the quads are an example of that. Uh, the uh, triceps, 
also an example of that, forming on the sides of our body and then rotating uh, to their uh, actual position. And of course, this rotation process can go wrong during development, uh, in which uh, a person may be in toed or out toed to um, certain degrees. There are apparatuses to fix this. Uh, I haven't seen any scientific papers that uh, attest to the efficacy of these procedures and these apparatuses, but they're uh, often used, frequently used. Uh, what generally happens is that the rotation process uh, comes into its own and completes itself by about age 10. But if not, then typically um, uh, an apparatus and, and surgery can be performed uh, in an attempt to correct that procedure. It's actually interesting because I did read a study uh, that indicated that individuals who are slightly in toed are um, more prevalent as athletic runners. So uh, professional athletic runners, long distance runners, a higher proportion than is normal in the population are actually in toed. So the in towing might give some sort of uh, muscular um, motive advantage in bipedal running. <clears throat> so we've already talked about this ossification process. If you need a refresher, it's here, or you can go back to the previous slides. Um, but it, understanding that the mesenchyme is condensing and uh, initiating chondrogenesis is the key here. Here I'm showing you a slide illustrating all of these different Hox genes. Um, not that I, I don't want you to know any of these or memorize anything on this slide. In fact, I don't even think I provided it for you in the PowerPoints. But I'm just showing it to you here so you understand the complexity of these different gradients and the number of different Hox genes that end up determining the shapes and functions of the different bones and joints and, and musculature in the body. Uh, so just to um, give you an appreciation of that complexity, nothing more. Don't memorize the, anything on that slide. So there is a number of different morphogens uh, signals that are important to understand in this uh, limb outgrowth process. <clears throat> so that limb bud formation, the first stage where the limb bud starts growing out from the um, lateral plate mesoderm, that's initiated by FGF10 uh, morphogen. So without FGF10, limbs do not even begin to form. But more than FGF10 is needed to end up creating this entire limb in its appropriate way. So after that initiation of the outgrowth of the lateral plate mesoderm, uh, then um, the apical ectodermal ridge, the small ridge on the end of the limb bud, is formed by uh, different BMP uh, morphogens. Those BMP um, morphogens forming this uh, AER, so the AER then starts sending out other growth factors, FGF4 and FGF8, uh, that then induce proliferation of the mesoderm uh, that's infiltrating that limb bud. And it's that infiltration of the uh, mesoderm, that proliferation, that uh, builds up and, and creates the bone models and the musculature. So here we can see uh, these different colored arrows represent the different tissues that end up infiltrating the uh, limb bud as it's forming. So we've talked about the neural crest cells coming off of uh, the uh, groove between the neural tube and the, um, the uh, epidermal cell layer. So those neural crest cells have come out and they've begun to form the dorsal root ganglion located here. That dorsal root ganglion uh, begins receiving uh, signals to cause axons to grow out toward the limb bud and to innervate structures uh, in especially the um, epidermal cells, the pigmented cells, uh, the dermal surface uh, in the limb bud itself. We also see a similar process happening with the lower motor neurons from the neural tube receiving a signal to grow out, uh, to extend an axon toward the mesoderm, toward the presumptive muscle tissue that's going to form around 
the condensing mesenchyme. And then the myoblasts themselves that end up forming the muscle tissue grow out of the somites on either side of the neural tube and uh, form the musculature of the, uh, of the limb bud. So that's how that process takes place. <clears throat> now, in addition to um, that limb bud growth and the patterning as we go more laterally and peripherally from uh, along the limb, there's also an anterior-posterior pattern, patterning that occurs, and that begins at a very early stage. There's a cluster of cells called the zone of pro uh, proliferating activity that's on the, um, the uh, ventral portion of the limb bud. And those cells produce an excess of retinoic acid or vitamin A. That vitamin A induces the expression of SHH and causes that uh, ventral dorsal axis to form along the limb buds. <clears throat> so uh, if that process goes awry, then what we end up having is a mirrored image of the limb. So here's an example of that actually happening. This individual has uh, two thumbs, uh, one on either side of their hand. Um, so <clears throat> one of the things uh, you may be familiar with the um, the um, acne medication Accutane. Accutane is a high concentration of retinoic acid. And so because Accutane is just retinoic acid in such high concentrations, it's, um, it's contraindicated for women who are or, are or may become pregnant because retinoic acid induces birth defects by uh, causing the uh, production of SHH uh, and thus um, messing up that dorsal ventral axis throughout the body. <clears throat> so of course with any of these processes things can go wrong and that's what I want you to start thinking about uh, in this whole process. You're learning the anatomy uh, not just so you can memorize it and uh, know what the perfect drawing of the human body looks like. You're memorizing anatomy so you know what right looks like and so you know when things are wrong and you know how they went wrong. So you can use that diagnostic thinking process to determine that. So here's a number of different um, named defects in limb formation that result from an imbalance of these signaling molecules or um, other genetic or non-genetic uh, defects. So here we have examples of amelia, or the complete absence of a limb, or meromelia, which is the partial absence of a limb. Um, and then here we have, on the other side of this individual, phocomelia, which is um, basically irregular shapes to the limbs that form. Uh, there's different issues with the formation of the digits. Here we see um, bradydactyly, which is, can be short digits, or syndactyly, fused digits, as well as polydactyly, extra digits on the hand uh, from um, perhaps an excess of the growth signals or a growth signal that didn't send out the stop uh, signal, so we didn't stop forming other bones in the hand. And uh, also cleft foot is an example there. Now finally, this is not a developmental defect. This is uh, a, what's called a developmental amputation or amniotic band syndrome. So there are bands of fibrous tissue within the womb and these bands of fibrous tissue can end up wrapping around limbs or digits uh, in an individual as they develop and cause those uh, forming limbs or digits to be amputated, uh, to be cut off or not form correctly, uh, pinched off. So <clears throat> it's um, always um, amazing to me um, the number of ways that things can go wrong, um, you know, despite any individual's ability to even impact these conditions. So there's so many things we can't control, and um, I'm always so um, uh, glad and, and lucky that uh, happy and gratified that I came out as normal as I did. <clears throat>
Uh, so anyway, uh, see you next lecture.